In this video, we're going to look at how fractions actually represent one part multiplied by however number, uh, however many there are in the numerator. Now, at first, that may seem confusing, but we're going to take a closer look at the top one here, four thirds. Now, what I mean when I say that four thirds is equal to a fraction um, multiplied by a certain number, well, what I mean is in four-thirds, you could see that I have four groups of one-third. Here's the first one-third, the second one-third, another one-third, and the fourth one-third. So while we do say that four-thirds is equal to four-thirds, we could also say that it is equal to four groups of one-third. 5 halves. Let's take a look at this one. You could see here that I have half the circle, I have another half, and so on and so forth until I actually count up all of them and I see that I have 5 groups of 1 half each to equal 5 halves. And last but not least, actually it is the least of all of them, we have four-fifths, that means that there will be four groups of one-fifth each to equal four-fifths, which we can write four times one-fifth. Now why does this make sense? Well, using what we know about multiplying fractions, when we have a whole number multiplied by a fraction, that whole number is going to multiply the numerator, and the denominator will remain. So it would be 4 times 1 over 5 in the bottom, which is equal to 4 fifths, 5 times 1 over 2 in the middle, and 4 times 1 over 3. It's just something important to note. When you have a fraction, you could think of it as 1 over the denominator times however many you have in the numerator, because that's the total number of pieces.